Hello and welcome to ProtoSpeed Tutorials. Uh, this time this tutorial is quite significant and uh, special because this time we are going to teach you how to make a casting tree uh, on Rhino and Matrix. So let's start. Uh, let's discuss a few points that we are going to discuss in this tutorial like uh, what this tutorial is about. As I told you it's about making a printable casting tree uh, uh, using Rhino and Matrix. Uh, number two, we, we are going to use uh, the supports as proofs as well, like we have been doing in the earlier tutorials. Uh, and uh, number three, in between the tutorial, we are going to uh, tell you some tips and tricks. And uh, number four, in the end of the tutorial, you are going to have uh, a giveaway. And uh, we are going to give you this uh, casting tree so you can analyze the supports uh, and uh, you can print it. Uh, on your printer depending upon uh, the platform size and the technical specification. So let's start working. Uh, first we are going to import uh, our piece that we are going to make uh, the tree of. Uh, let's take this ball because uh, often in the high production environments this simple piece of jewelry has to be printed and casted many times. So. First, we are going to consider the size of the flask, uh, so we don't work outside that area. Let's press F4 and take the center. Here we have drawn the diameter. This is our area, we sh uh, our casting tree should not exceed this uh, area. Then we are going to draw the stick that's going to go in the rubber base. We are going to give the dimensions. Uh, we have drawn the curves, now we are going to uh, make a cylinder out of it as we have, are extruding it to let's say 135 now we have our stick that's going into the that's going to go into the uh, rubber base of the flask now we have to carefully orient the piece uh, the goal here is to take the maximum out of this flask so we are going to arrange the piece in such a way uh, that we get uh, a lot of uh, uh, pieces into one casting tree. So here we are going to give it uh, the points where the screw is going to go, uh, going to connect. Uh, as we have taught in our earlier tutorials, here the supports are going to act as screws as well. So. Our sprues have to uh, serve uh, multiple purpose. So let's. Uh, this is the uh, this is the first uh, sprue or support set that's going to go uh, into the jewelry piece. So it has to be strong because as it's going to get uh, printed, there are going to be vibrations. Uh, your casting tree should be supported adequately to absorb the vibrations that are gonna uh, come during the printing. So as we have uh, given the gauge to the curve, we are going to orient the jewelry piece. So I think the thickness of the sprue is uh, not enough yet. So. Uh, we can rescale it because this is going to be the main support on which uh, the ball is going to be built on. So we have to be absolutely sure that uh, it has uh, adequate thickness. Now we are going to connect some more sprues to it because we also have to uh, consider and keep the casting in mind. So the running of gold shall be uh, adequate and proper. So we are going to connect this sprue to our uh, main support. And then we are going to adjust it on our jewelry piece.
you can modify the thickness based on your understanding uh, this is uh, just for reference uh, with our understanding it will uh, be sufficient but depending on the pressure of your casting machine or your casting setup you can adjust the thickness of the sprues accordingly Once we are sure that uh, it is connecting at both ends, uh, we can mirror it to the other side. If there are minor adjustments needed, we can do it. Basically, it is only the first uh, uh, branch that you need to be working on. Then the works get a lot easier. Basically, after uh, giving the curve gauge, it's all about uh, the rotation and the adjustment. We can mirror the same sprues to the top side, uh, giving all the pieces uh, adequate support. And sufficient sprues for casting. We have to keep uh, this very important point in mind uh, that the nature of sprues or supports you are giving uh, to the jewelry piece depends upon the geometry of it. With uh, another jewelry piece uh, and another type of geometry, you will apply the sprues and supports differently. But the basic idea would be same. Uh, we need to keep in mind uh, during adjusting the sprues that uh, later on we have to clean it as well. So better to adjust the sprues in such angles that it can be easily removed without uh, any need for two more touch-ups. In terms of uh, adjusting the 3D object, uh, you can use a much convenient way that is Gimbal, an extension that is available widely with Rhino and Matrix. So again, here we are making sure that's easier to clean later on. Now, as we are sure that we it is sitting perfectly, we are going to attach it to the main handle by using the rotate commands. There is a trick, uh, there is a tip for you here as well that in order to check whether this uh, uh, support uh, is not causing any islands to form, you can just import this piece right here and run it through the multi section and check out if there are any islands forming. Once you are sure about uh, uh, this branch, 
you can uh, apply it to every branch that we are going to make uh, later on. Here I think we have provided uh, uh, enough support and spruce. Now we can move on. So as we are done with the most important part of this tutorial, now we are going to move to the second one, which uh, uh, we are going to copy or you can say uh, apply the array polar command uh, to mirror this branch around the stick uh, after making a few adjustments then we are going to apply uh, the array polar command and as you can see we can fit here around uh, around 15 pieces in one section so now we can utilize the space that is uh, on the top and we are going to adjust uh, all the set of balls accordingly in a way that they don't uh, attached, get attached to each other. Now what we are going to do is we are going to copy these set of balls uh, to the other section uh, adding a floor to it. But uh, we have to make sure that we are utilizing the space uh, uh, properly. So first we are going to uh, copy this as it is, uh, making a sufficient gap in between the floors. I think uh, story would be story would be the most uh, appropriate term for it. So now we have two stories, uh, but are we utilizing the space uh, correctly? Let's rotate the second story a little so we can utilize the gaps that are on the first one. So after making sure that the pieces are not touching each other, there is sufficient space between them. We have rotated the second story. Uh, to utilize more space that is left by the first one. We can adjust it uh, down a little utilizing the space. It's better to check uh, every piece. Now once we are sure that space between these two stories are adequate we are going to group uh, both of them so now they are grouped now we can copy these two stories to the remaining area of the stick these stories one by one or you can apply array linear uh, on the stick so let's uh, Let's apply array linear. First we are going to select our group pieces. There are two stories. And then we're going to go to the array linear command. Let's give it uh, 5. And the reference point uh, should be the bottom of the stick. And now we are going to try to adjust it. As I said, you can uh, copy it one by one as well. Make sure that uh, every story is not uh, uh, in every story, the pieces are not touching with each other. Once we have applied array linear, we are going to check again 
whether any of the balls or the pieces are coinciding with, with each other and apparently they are not. Now we are going to do one more thing. Uh, we are going to connect all the branches together. So there is extra strength and less vibrations. So what we are going to do is we are going to uh, draw a cylinder on the one uh, section of the branch and then we are going to array polar it. Uh, let's draw a curve then we are going to give it uh, uh, we are going to pipe it and give it giving it gauge let's say 1.3 and now we are going to place it between the one section of the branches let's give it a color For a better view now let's be sure that we have adjusted it uh, accurately I think uh, it's not uh, thick enough so let's give it uh, more thickness and then give it a color again now adjusting it to this point here it can give uh, the strength uh, to the main branch and the, all of the connecting sprues Now as we are done adjusting it, we are going to array polar it to all of the branches. Now let's check whether the cylinders are placed correctly across each branch. Uh, there is there is one story that uh, we rotated so we have to do array polar again to the slightly ro rotated story So we have a polar data again. Now the cylinders are placed across all the branches. Now we are going to subtract uh, the extra length of the supports. Uh, 2.5 mm is enough but around 3, 3 mm mark is uh, good as well. We are going to select our cylinders that we need to cut and subtract them with the box we have just drawn.
we apply color to the objects to for our ease and now we have successfully uh, cutted the extra length of the cylinders which also act as our supports because as we know that uh, this is uh, comparatively a very large structure so we need uh, extra strong supports at the base and we are almost done now to get access to the giveaway design uh, you will find a dropbox link in the description and if you need to uh, get access to other giveaway designs you can watch other tutorials and in their descriptions you will find the dropbox link thank you for staying with us uh, happy printing